Welcome to Sailing El Haleo. I am a mid-40-year-old who in my early 40s became disillusioned with modern society and all of its promises and pitfalls. Feeling that life was getting a little too boring, I decided to do the logical thing, which is to buy a 40-year-old sailboat and spend the next three or four years converting it into a long-range off-grid sailing vessel. Or it might have just been a midlife crisis, who knows. <laughs> From there, I enlisted the help of my trusty crew, and we've been spending the last three years going up and down the east coast of the United States, learning how to sail, learning how to read charts, how to navigate, how to read tides, and basically just how to survive on a sailboat. From here, we plan on spending one more summer up north, doing one last round of upgrades before finally escaping the United States in late 2024 or early 2025. These are our adventures. Feel free to come along if you'd like. Last week, we had made it as far as Fernandina Beach, Florida, and Frank and Beans were finally reunited. That ended up being the last good day of weather in over two weeks of high wind and rain. It was the longest period of sustained bad weather that we had seen thus far. And from there, we moved on down the intracoastal waterway. We stayed outside of Jacksonville one night. And when we tried to move on the next day, we actually came up against the strongest current that we had ever seen thus far. It actually put the Elliott cut to shame, which I never thought I would say, but it was the strongest current and we actually couldn't move against it. It was uh, pretty insane. The, the video is kind of interesting on that one. So <laughs> I guess we might as well go ahead and get right into it. Grab a drink, climb aboard and let's get going. And that is a very small taste of the weather that we had for two weeks while staying in Fernandina Beach. <laughs> it was uh, the longest stretch of sustained bad weather that we had uh, ever since we started sailing. And it got pretty rough at times. Um, the waves weren't too bad. You can see they're, they're not outrageous, but we did have wind gusts. There were days on end where we would have on average um, sustained winds of 35 to 40 miles per hour with gusts up to 60 miles per hour. So it got uh, a little sporty at times, especially when the wind was going against the current, which always um, throws you around a little bit. But thankfully that didn't happen too much while uh, we were having this bad weather. And it wasn't like every day the wind was blowing that hard. I think the minimum wind speeds that we had during that two week stretch was around 20 miles an hour, which is quite enjoyable. I mean, it's not bad. Um, so. But that was only for maybe a day at a time. So we didn't want to move on knowing that we were going to get 40 mile an hour winds within a day or two. So we're kind of fair weather travelers. We didn't really want to, you know, we like to have be somewhere where we know we're safe when we're expecting high winds. So if that means staying put for a day or two uh, to wait out those high winds, we're more than happy doing that. And in this case, with the way the winds kept coming, the high wind and rain and that kind of stuff we actually ended up staying for two weeks in fernandina beach and this would have been the you know at this time of year this was in i believe it was in the middle to end of december so the sun was not very high in the sky at this this is you know the shortest the shortest days of the year you know quote unquote the shortest sunlight days of the year so we weren't getting much solar in especially when with a heavy cloud cover you do still bring in some solar on cloudy days, but not anywhere near like you do on a sunny day. So the wind generator really got us through this period. The wind generator was spinning 24 seven. And you know, we had both freezers and the fridge running. Those are our big consumers of electricity. And then our cooking, of course. But the wind generator was actually able to keep up with it the entire time. I think the over the two weeks that we were in Fernandina Beach, our battery bank was depleted by only 30%, which is not bad at all for sitting still for two weeks. Uh, normally, during that time of year, you know, I would have to move. If the wind wasn't blowing the way it was, I would have had to have moved after maybe three or four days tops, 
you know, we could burn through almost our entire battery bank in that time. So th this was a really great test for the wind generator. Up until now, it, you know, when the wind is blowing maybe 12 to 20 miles an hour, it'll trickle some power in and don't get me wrong, every amp counts. But when it's only adding in two or three amps, you know, even over a 20 hour period, that does add up, but it's not a huge contribution to our overall power consumption. So I wasn't, um, I was not, what's the right word? Regretful that we installed the wind generator. I just didn't know up until now if it really would ever contribute significantly to our power, um, our overall power profile, I guess. And this really, this solidified it. I mean, when stuff gets bad and the wind is blowing, you know, I never would have guessed that we would have two weeks of sustained clouds, rain, high wind. It, it just, we had never encountered that. And this just really uh, nailed or brought home how important the wind generator is in our um, power profile. And I don't, it's probably boring to most people, but hey, I guess if you're uh, looking at sailing, this is one instance where the wind generator really bailed us out and I didn't, um, I didn't know if that would ever be the case, but it is, or it has been. After two weeks in Fernandina Beach, we finally escaped, and here we are on our way towards Jacksonville. And right now we're in the Nassau River. If you go through the Nassau River, you do not want to follow the Intracoastal Waterway. The Intracoastal Waterway cuts across a shoal, and if you try and do that even at high tide, you will run aground. It is really shoaled in. So if you stick to your sonar charts, go down towards the uh, bridge, I believe that's the A1A there, and just uh, follow the deep water, you'll be fine. After traveling about 25 miles, we decided to anchor for the evening, and there's a good spot just, uh, it's a little ways outside of Jacksonville, and it's along the ICW, it's an easy pull off. So we anchored there for the night. There is a good free dock across the way. A lot of boats use it. It was it was full the night that we were there. It wasn't full when we got there, so we could have used the free dock. But according to the navigation chart uh, in Navionics, there are some pilings in that area where you'd have to go in and turn around to use the free dock. And we don't need anything. We didn't need to get off the boat. We didn't have to go to town or do anything. So there was no real upside to using the free dock. So we just anchored for the night. We got up early the next morning and got underway as we had our sights set on St. Augustine. Well, not quite St. Augustine, five miles short of St. Augustine. There's a really nice anchorage. It's uh, kind of a, it's not necessarily in the middle of nowhere, but you kind of feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. Uh, in Florida, it can be hard to find anchorages where you can't see a thousand houses in your direct line of sight. And uh, this was one of them. So <laughs> we planned on staying there. And I knew we were going to be going against the current in the morning. There was nothing I could do about that. Sometimes you just have to run against the current and uh, make slow progress. So we started out the day running against the current, and then we ran into a force of nature we could not overcome. And I must have gotten lucky the previous times that I'd gone through this area, and this time I was not lucky. <laughs> so we're going to do a little jumping around, flash forwards, flash backwards. Uh, I'm going to talk about what happened uh, and then I'll show you the footage of it just so you kind of understand what happened um, after the fact I guess. Hey yo, we are in Atlantic Beach. Um, we moved yesterday finally after a bunch of uh, high wind and this morning we've only gone about four miles. We were running against the current and we stayed outside of Jacksonville last night and we got to this bridge right here, which is in Atlantic Beach. And the current under there is extremely strong, especially at mid tide, which it is now. And it's running at six knots, which <laughs> we cannot uh, overcome. And we actually got about halfway through and just came to a dead stop, even when we had the motor cranked up as high as we dare push it. Um, so then we were stuck under the bridge and we had to figure out how to get out of it. 
in a narrow, very narrow week. It wasn't even a boat width wide. So what do you do then? <laughs> so we eased off and we managed to get back out, let the current push us back out where we could get uh, moved around. And the puppy dogs are enjoying some treats. Where's we get? There she is. Yes. So we're in an anchorage here and it's kind of, it's one of my least favorite anchorages. We've stayed here one other time. I just don't like it. It's, it's deep. There's not much swing room. Um, but I don't think we really have much, much choice because by the time the current lets up and we can go underneath the bridge, it'll be too late for us to make it to St. Augustine. Or even, we weren't even gonna go as far as St. Augustine. We were just gonna go to an anchorage about five miles outside of St. Augustine is about the next closest decent one. And that's still 23 miles away. So I don't think if we pulled anchor here and left at uh, 11, we'd be running against the tide at that point the entire rest of the way. So at three knots, it'd take us another seven hours to do um, that 21 miles and we're going to be uh, the anchors that we're going to there are crab pots there so anchoring in the dark in that kind of uh, situation is not a good idea <laughs> so I think we're gonna stay here thankfully uh, the wind will be calm tonight uh, this is as high as it's supposed to get and it's a very gentle breeze right now uh, Jenny's just barely running so and it actually looks like she's sitting still but it is spinning, um, gotta love frame rates, um, but that's at like 12 miles per hour. So it's a very gentle breeze. Uh, so we should be safe here tonight. The, one of the wild cards that I hate about this place is there is a big chunk of metal. Somewhere up ahead here, um, we anchored about 100 feet away from where it's supposed to be, but you never know, stuff shifts. So in the morning we might have a stuck anchor which will be awesome. I guess we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out in the morning. But the good thing is, is if we get up just before sunrise, oh, you okay there, buddy? You okay, bud? Yes, so oh, how about you, Weeks? What do you think, huh? Yeah. If we um, leave just before sunrise, that'll be at high tide. And then <clears throat> we should go against the current for just a little bit, maybe five miles, and then we'll have the current with us the rest of the way. So the smart thing is to wait for tomorrow. And hey, well, since we've already anchored, if the anchor is stuck, it's stuck. I mean, we, you know, whether we pull it in two hours or wait till tomorrow is not gonna fix that fact. So I guess we'll probably stay here tonight and figure out in the morning if we got a stuck anchor. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? Should we stay here tonight? What do you guys think? Does that sound like a good idea? All right. Well, I hope you all are well and staying warm. We're gonna, I'm gonna start packing stuff up and I guess we'll get uh, settled in for the day. Talk to you later, bye-bye. We don't need a destination. Let's go where the river's taking us. Mm -hmm. Over fields and through the country, letting go of everything but us. If we hold tight, we can chase the Mississippi through the night, hundreds of miles away. The water is warm, let's dip our toes right in and be reborn. I don't know why we'd wait. Grab some glasses in the atlas, we can prove we're smarter than a phone. Go where there's no reception See if we can make it on our own mm -hmm. Breathe deep in your chest If we hold tight We can chase the Mississippi through the night Hundreds of miles away The water is warm and that's all we have time for this week. I would love to give a massive shout out to my Patreon crew. Without your guys' support, I would not make these videos. 
And my Patreon crew is Joan and Juddy Judnick, Val and Chris Alcorn, Denise and Eli Sackett, Sherry Erickson, Deb Shaw, Matthew Spotton, and Peter Allen. Thank you guys so much for your support. It really means the world to me. And I do have one legacy patron member. Her name is Joan Linbo. Unfortunately, she has passed on, but she lives on in our hearts forever. We, we miss you, Joan. If you are interested in joining our Patreon crew, there is a link in the description down below. That'll take you to our Patreon page where you can sign up. And that'll give you access to hundreds of behind-the-scenes photos and videos and real-time updates. Let you know where we're at and what's going on. And you'd help support the channel, which would be awesome. If you do like our videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. That helps us out more than you'll ever know. Alrighty, I hope you all are well, and we'll see you next week.